It's Grand National time. Next race up is the Grand National time for a quick pin stickers guide with me and the housewives' favourite, Stu Gray. Hello. And so he's already up in the commentary box, ready to go. And a quick look now down the card and see what we think might do okay and what we might think might not do okay after we've seen them all go down of a start. Let's have a look at the top one then. Stu, grip it and tip it, Derek Hinton. Well, you'd love to you'd love to see Hollywood pick up a, a Grand National and especially off of uh, top weight, but I don't think so. I mean, yeah, one last week the Midlands Grand National. Uh, let's be honest, I think it's, it's going to be very hard off top weight. Two pieces of information straight on the table. Last week go. he won the Midlands Grand National and he won the Arc, so he's a man in form. Plus, if yeah, you go pretty. if you go back through time to previous seasons, he has won this race quite a bit. He's a bit of a Grand National expert, is Derek Hinton. So it's no for Lawn hope at the top of the weights. Just under him is Paul Rotals, so IKEA Q of 148. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't think it's got a chance. It's got a chance, but it's fallen, but it's got a lot of weight and it's not going to win. Okay, fair enough. David Robertson's fast boy. You like this one, don't you? I like this one. I think this one is going to be jumping the last and is going to be chasing and chasing and he's going to come close and he is definitely in my top three mm, not uh, one for me uh, yeah no not one I, I don't fancy it I agree it won over four mile four a couple of weeks back the more was millions and mm, no not one for me but if you like it go ahead ok so that brings Last. us on to Miri Mazdur the Leon van Rensburg returning winner not done a lot this season what do you reckon uh, no I don't think it's going to be successful. It says it likes firmish and wasn't the ground fairly firm last, this time last year. I can't remember, but uh, no, not one for me, I'm afraid. No, nope, last two seasons the returning winner has not done very well, so I think it's going to be three times that that's going to happen on the trot. That takes us to promotion, Paul Rhodes. Yeah, he would be my first of my top four. Uh, my fancy brim being brought in at the break. Paul knows what he's doing. Um, what did its race was? What did it? Um, that previous race it won. I can't remember. Did it, it won the Scottish Borders? Was that only last week? Or was that for no? It was five weeks ago. His first race, it came out. Now it's definitely been kept out by Paul. It's only raced week one, week two. Gets weight runs week six to get something into its legs, and then pops up week eleven. It's going to be a tough one to beat, I think. Yep, I think so. It's looking like it should be the favourite, I would think. And it's probably going to go very close. I mean, you can ignore its middle run because it was in that Velka part of Bika and it was one of the ones that got walloped in the first bend, wasn't it? So uh, the second of Leon van Rensburg's horse is next. Sir. So he's the first one to get sort of two in. So they're both highly weighted. Don't look very good, though, does it? No, form's been pretty poor. It's fallen its last two times out. I think it will be going for FFF, yep. the French Football Federation. Archaleo, serious chill. Obi Wan. Sorry, fallen too many times and unseated. Not one for me. Yep, he's a serious windmill tilter. He's serious. I like that, but it's not got much chance. <laughs> now and then for you. Hmm, interesting. Well, was pretty good earlier in the season. One twice on the trot and a good um, fifth I think he was in the Welsh Grand National but worryingly has unshipped the pilot the last two times and could have done with going down about £10 but it's probably got a live chance OK, then we've got Darjeeling Spartan and uh, John Morgan he's only runner of the day likes the conditions only been out three times only finished once so mm. it could be anything he could, and it's strange to see John Morgan's only got one runner in the race, and probably a sporting reason he's only got one runner in the race, because most of his horses are probably rated about 207, and they'll put anything else out of the handicap, so he's done a, everybody a good turn there. Yeah, no, he's done. I agree. He um, doesn't look like the winner to me, though, and I think poor old John might be wishing he'd put a second one in, because I can see this one being a high-profile casualty early on. Ooh. Kiss of Kiss of Martin. <laughs> and then we've got Pray for a Miracle for Joshua one at Cheltenham last week. Um gotta be there or thereabouts. Not in my top four, but uh but he will be uh it will be there at the end, I imagine. I don't think it will be a, a casualty of any sort. I think he better get down on his knees and start praying already. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we've got Mr D D, Darren Thompson, Upper Street. Mm. He's only got one in this as well, hasn't he, Darren? No, he's got two. Oh, no, he's got one. No, he has got one. I was just noticed the other day, you're quite right. Pulled up. Last time out. Was he pulled up on purpose to save his legs for this one? Or is he just can't take the distance? It's never it's never really run well over twenty over three mile five, so no, no chance. No, too far for this one. Yeah. Double in flyer, Kevin Mina. Every, got every chance. Yeah. I think the weight's right on this one. Um, this would be my 
my my favourite. I fancy this one will win. It's been around. It ran last year in the in the, the Welsh Grand National. Didn't run particularly well. It won the Scottish Grand National last year, and so but didn't run in the national, which is strange. But this year it's up for it. Now I think it's going to win. Well, yeah, Kevin always has some good um, some good long distance horses, and I guess he probably had two other runners in it in the Grand National last year, which is probably the only reason why this one didn't run in it. But I think you're right; it's going to be up there in the van, and I think it'll probably be in the top four. Okay, then we've got uh, Molly at Surfers, Sam Ducan. Hasn't got a lot of form. It's got a win, um, it's got a win but it's got a couple of unseated riders, and um, Holger doesn't think that it can stay four miles, so I think we can rule that one out. Yeah, no, give that a First of uh, Mr. Clutterbuck's horses, the Great Mac. If we say it's nicely weighted, you'll think we're picking on him again, so... Um, we well, he is nicely weighted. <laughs> so we better, we better not say that. Um... That horse wasn't clutterbucked. <laughs> It won a Moore's Millions over four miles on the soft ground not too long ago. Um, it's got to be in with a chance. Well, it ran in the heavy conditions in the Leon Van Rensburg Cup last week, and I think, what, did it not fall? It fell, but that's probably not a bad thing, because it meant its weight didn't go up. Mm, interesting, because he doesn't usually place horses just to uh, come nowhere. Might be well, tri- might be well in, but it's <laughs> not going to win. <laughs> It'll be well in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Meadhead, second horse, double first. This could be a dark horse, couldn't it? No, it's just it's going to get what a massive, uh, almost three stone or two and a half stone off of top weight. Interesting. Didn't think. I don't think it's better than Dublin Flyer though. It's like a bit of a dark horse, but um, all its runs have been over four miles, so it could be with a bit of a chance. But it's the it's one of the, it's out of the handicap, so that could be a problem. Yeah, but just out of the handicap, you never know. But I still prefer Dublin Flyer. That leads us on to Peter Hannans, one of his. He hasn't got many horses this year. And this one, Name Check Hotel. It actually won a good race, did it not? Way back. He did. He's only been out twice since then, I think. And he's pulled up both times. So it's probably on a decent mark. We say they're just out of the handicap now, these. But that's the only time it ever did any good. And it was over 33 yeah, furlongs. He actually got an injury last week for pull-ups. It was a genuine pull-up. <laughs> It was actually a genuine pull-up, which is rare. And the other one, I think, was a much too short. Too short. It looks like it goes a mm, sneaky, sneaky, mm. sneaky. Top five, top six, maybe. Yeah, could be, a, could be a live outsider. Yes. Now here's a live outsider: Zelda Menyana for Darren Thompson, having one uh, sitting out of the handicap. That doesn't have a lot of form. I totally agree with you. But this is the type of horse that's going to win it. <laughs> It's not going to be something that's uh, wonderful. It's had a couple of good uh, runs in the Moors Millions, you know, getting places. Never won. But uh, now I have a feeling this is in the top four of this horse. It's a genuine four miler, and you're doing the same as Doug normally does. You've already got about six in your top four. We ain't got halfway down a card yet. Oh. <laughs> I'm allowed as many as I wish. <laughs> and another one that's going to be in the top four is my horse. <laughs> no. And that moves me on to my first horse. Um, it's our Crete. That I quite like. I've purely brought him in... It's uh, in the window. He's just done what he had to do was run three races, one get one at four. So he's a bit of a front runner. The only time I noticed the, the last race, because there was a couple of other whippets in the race, it kind of he didn't get, he didn't really run his race. So if a couple of front runners go early on, which I hope they do, Carl, people like that, serious. My apologies, Darren. If they all go the first couple of fences and Zark Creek can kind of dominate. He'll have a chance. Be good. He ran well for a long while last week, so maybe it's got a bit of a chance for you. But it's a when it came in its first race, when it came third, it actually came third to John's winner last week over the Leon Van Rensburg Cup, and it was only, if I remember, it was only a maiden. It was over four. It was over four miles, and I think it was only around about three lengths behind it. Hmm. Mm, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what gives me hope. Gives me hope for it. To be yeah. truthful, yeah. Yeah. No, it's three and a half lengths behind. Smart's Castle, which I think came second, didn't it, last yep. week? But very yeah. close to second. So it's got a chance. Well, best of luck with that one. Thank you. That follows up with Let Your Mind. Is this your golden nugget? This was my number one hope for this race at the start of the season. It was the first horse that I ever bred that could win over this distance. It's a firmer ground horse because most of the time this time of the year the ground is getting sort of like good good to firmish it's not going to go into soft ground so that's what's going to beat it that and a mixture of being out of a stone out of the handicap it's sadly not going to be able to win okay well, fair enough now first of our lower rated horses and i mean when i say lower rated they've been running now and i had to chase this week and the first one up sort of the grace for terran house 
Yeah, that's one thing looking at the car. The big jump, isn't it? Let your mind is rated 111, and the next one down is Olivia Grace, 99. So, where are the horses rated 100 to 110? Corbin Clatterbuck, they're sitting on 130. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Gray. <laughs> it's difficult to fancy anything from now on simply because they've got to give weight away. They're, these are all over a stone out of the handicap, and I really can't see anything from now on winning the race. There's a few that might no, run quite well, and this one will run quite well. It'll finish seventh, eighth, something like that. 118 while it's suffer. As I said, likes firm ground. Not going to win. It's not going to be 180. It's not even going to be double top. It's uh, no chance of winning this. <laughs> Elfberg for James Follis. That's going to need a Formula One engine. Lots of pit stops if it's got any chance of winning. Firm ground again. Too far up the handicap. Can't win. No, nice. And then we've got Wild Coco from Doug Warren. I think that will probably be sitting at home having a cup of cocoa early on. Sadly, yeah, because Doug looked like he was going to do all right with his jumpers this year. They were going well for a bit, and I think he would like to have a real live chance in this one, but I think it's just too far out the handicap. And then we've got Darren Howe's Christmas Aria, a horse named Christmas. Yes, and we did you see that? Kevin Meenan put a link up to the programme. If anybody wants to see it, you don't look at the first bit, which is the film Dead Cert. You then go down to the second bit, which is called The Racing Game. It's three episodes in one link on YouTube. It's the second episode. So go to about 45 minutes, and that's where the episode starts. And it is almost exactly as I remember it. It's great. Well done, Kevin Meenan. Christmas Aria will run a good race, won't win, but could well get into the top ten. Oh, interesting. Then we follow up uh, Derek Hinton's No Half, and uh, I think it'll have even less than half. I don't think it'll even get halfway. It'll be a Derek Hinton horse that will go off in the lead, and it will fall by Beaches Brook. Oh, OK, even naming fences now. <laughs> That's very confident of you. OK, Daniel French comes in with Bright New Dawn. One that stayed on its feet, though. Yep, it'll stay on its feet, and it'll finish 24th. OK, 24th. <laughs> well, Whitney like for that. James Follett's his second one. Whitney after the formula, we don't know. It might be, I anything. think it'll be more like Whitney Houston, we have a problem. Pulled up, pulled up, pulled up, all the time pulled up, no chance. <laughs> and moves on to Alex's first one, Alex Cherry's Ekier. Been around a long time, and uh, again, one that stays on his feet. It is, this is another one that'll get round, and it'll probably be up in the van coming to about the sort of second last and Alex will be getting excited and then it'll just get swamped and finish about 10th, 11th, 12th, something like that. Okay, fair enough. Then we've got Doug's Street Fire. This will be plodding round at the back most of the time and it'll still be plodding round at the back at the end. <laughs> and then we've got Carl Aaron. He's got uh, two together here, just off 79 and 75. His first one is Ellis Pawn and I think that's probably likely to be going off to the pawn shop. No, oh, I think so. And if you play chess a lot like I used to, then pawns are always taken quite early on, aren't they? Nobody really values them that much, but I'm sure Carl Aragante values this horse just as much as all of his others, but he ain't going to win today. And that, then they've got Johansson or John Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I know it's spelled Johansson. I was trying to make that funny. Um, no, okay. Then there's uh, Johansson pulled up last time out. Yeah, I mean, it's firm. Yeah, it's got, it's got, more chance of more chance of me running round and winning this race than than Johansson winning. With anybody on your back? Well, yeah, even with anybody <laughs> on my back. I wouldn't need anybody on my back. There's no way they could win. He probably couldn't even beat me. <laughs> then we've got the oldest horse in the race, Corsican Boy, the twelve-year-old for me. Um, this is about his third season, I think. Um, I think it's one odd races in his time. Doesn't like the ground, but stays on his feet usually. I know he's got a little unseated there. He'll get round. He'll finish. He'll be like 16th or something. He'll finish probably just about in time for week 12. Ha, 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 ha. And that leads us on to Monsoon. For Alex Jerry, his second one, 10 year old. Yeah, uh, firm growing, firm growing, firm going. Pulled, <laughs> pulled up three times at the last four. I'm going to laugh at you. He needs, he needs a monsoon to take him away. And then the bottom of the pile is Peter Hammond's second horse, Lucky Money. And I don't think he's going to see any. Uh, I think if he wants any Lucky Money, if he's got any Lucky Money, he needs to get hold of his Lucky Money and he needs to go and put it on promotion because that is what is going to win the Starters Order 6 Grand National. Promotion will be the winner. Fast Boy will finish very fast and come second. And I think we can be looking at... Dublin Flyer to be pretty close up as well with Ikea probably not far after that one and then Great Mac okay have I got to give a list Ooh, do what you like oh okay no that's wise I don't think you've got them all right I think it's going to be a lower in the handicap that's going to win this one on the conditions and I think Dublin Flyer is, is your one um, Ikea Q won't make it round 
uh, promotion for Paul will definitely be there or thereabouts. I think it may get caught by Dublin Flyer in that last furlong and a half after the final fence. And uh, Darren Thompson's Elide Menyan will be in the top three, as well as my Dark Creek, because I'm going to put it out there. Oh, like they say, put it out to the universe, it comes back to you. So there you go, that's it, right up to the minute action, then they're all down at the start, milling about, you all geared up, ready to go? I am, it looks like the old start is bringing them in. Cavalry charge down to the start, down to the first, um, down to the first in, cross that milling road, which one's going to be the first one to fall, who knows, anything could happen in this, couldn't it, and it's going to be a pretty good race, so I'll um, hand you over now to Stu.